Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is Amy Nye. I am the uh, Partnerships and Training Director here at Sunlight Foundation. I just want to welcome everyone today uh, to today's webinar on Foreign Influence Explorer. So just uh, a couple of things uh, for housekeeping purposes, just to make sure to mute your phone by hitting star 6 and also to unmute it uh, by hitting star 7. Um, on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you also have um, an area where you can type in questions, and feel free to interrupt us with any questions uh, you, if you have any throughout the presentation. Um, so just a, a couple words about Sunlight. I'm sure many of you here are very familiar with us. We are a uh, transparency um, nonprofit here based in Washington, D.C., and we make a number of different tools and resources uh, for journalists and also just for the public. Um, and we encourage you to check out the different uh, tools and resources at sunlightfoundation.com. And then additionally, uh, this, is part, this webinar is part of our um, Sunlight Academy program, and you can see here. You can find out and learn more about um, Sunlight Academy at training.sunlightfoundation.com, and here you'll see uh, di different types of upcoming events, and then also previous uh, trainings that we have done, as well as a number of different training modules. So just really encourage everyone to check out the different resources that we have here at Sunlight. So um, around the table, we are here, uh, I'm here joined by Lindsay Young, uh, one of our developers, reporter slash uh, developers here, uh, who developed the tool, as well as a number of different colleagues, including Kathy Kiley, our uh, managing editor for the reporting group, um, and others around the table. Um, so I think we're just going to get started. Um, do you want to talk about Sarah? Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Lindsay Young, and I'm the developer for Foreign Influence Explorer. And today I'm going to uh, track you through the website. Uh, I find it very exciting because there's information here that you can't, that's very hard to find anywhere else. Um, we, we will go through lobbying data um, as well as, um, the <laughs> excuse me, um, we'll, we'll be going through um, some great stuff. And I think it's very important because uh, this gives you information that is really hard to find elsewhere, um, like totals um, and more broader influence information, as well as more detail than you can get from other sources uh, that you might be familiar with, like uh, the Lobbyist Disclosure Act filings. Um, so a quick summary of our, our training today. We are going to introduce you to Foreign Influence Explorer. Uh, we're going to talk about the different ways to get started, whether it's through the map, through the search function, uh, or through the feeds, and then also talk about the variety, the different pages that we have here. Um, so we have the different country profiles in which you can look at um, aggregates and tallies uh, for, uh, about each country, as well as look at uh, the foreign agent profiles. So note these are lobbyists, individuals, registrants, et cetera, who is working on behalf of foreign clients, as well as looking at the clients um, and their profiles themse themselves. So these, uh, when we're talking about clients, they could be any type of foreign groups. They could be a country, it could be their tourism bureau, it could be a foreign business or an organization, essentially any entity that has a political or a quasi-political relationship with the U.S. they are uh, required to file. Um, and then, nextly, we're going to go and look at sort of the, the uh, bulk download, because while it is great that we're providing you the maps and uh, the aggregate figures, oftentimes, I know there are a number of journalists here on the call, um, you're interested in just looking at the raw numbers yourself. So we will go through and teach you how to um, bulk download, as well as uh, lastly, uh, go through the different feeds that we have. This is the live and real-time content that we have, both on the foreign agent um, information as well as on proposed arm sales, which actually comes from a different data set, and we'll cover it as we go through it. Um, so that's, that's a quick summary of uh, the, the webinar today. Uh, we're slotted to be on this for about an hour, but hopefully um, the presentation will take about 30 minutes or so, and we're looking forward to your questions um, at the end of the session, as well as, as I said earlier, feel free to, to type it in on the side box, and we'll answer it uh, throughout the, the presentation. So let's get started. Thanks, Amy. Um, so I'm going to uh, share my screen. One moment, please. Okay, you should be looking at the homepage of uh, Foreign Influence Explorer. 
And feel free to um, follow along. Um, you can go to foreignexplorer.com. And um, I'm going to start off uh, with the, by explaining the, the map a bit. Um, you can select a, a region um, to focus in, in on, and then um, a country after that to reveal what kind of uh, records you're interested in. Um, Russia is really big in the news, so I think Russia is a great example. So I'll click on Russia. And on the right, that creates a link to the Ru Russia's uh, profile page. Um, I cl I'm clicking on that. And um, I'm going to uh, go through everything on this page, um, uh, starting with the foreign lobbying clients, uh, which is right, right after uh, the, the beginning. And, you can, and right here, you can see a list of all the clients that identify as coming from Russia. Um, any type of uh, separatist groups will get their own locations, and you should be able to find them from the, the map uh, with their own listing. But these are all clients that have um, identified as um, belonging to Russia. Um, and the information is uh, made available as, as we uh, type it in. Um, we go through uh, foreign the um, foreign registration registration <laughs> thank you For, foreign agent registration act records uh, to get this kind of information um, you can see that uh, for the Russian Federation uh, we have a client type uh, that comes from an a uh, form a the a B and uh, it's a foreign government and you can see that um, there's a, there's we keep track of totals. This is um, a total of process payments since 2013. And then if you click on that, um, you can. it has an ex explanation. Um, these are payments starting uh, with January 1st, and that's, those are payments so dated January 1st, 2013 to the present. Um, it's important to note that these are aggregate totals. So we're giving you this um, for the 20, uh, year 2013 so that you can essentially compare that number to other um, uh, entities as well. Um, yeah. And so if you, and then you'll see that there's different records that are available. And each of these are, provide a narrowed down and tailored results to what you're looking for. So this is just payment records from the uh, Russian Federation. So if that's what you're interested in, you click on this. And this will take you to all payment, rec all payment records um, that were from the Russian Federation. Um, and it's really important to note that I give you all the data that we have. Um, we are working on data entry every day. Um, we have all of 2013 entered. And we have 2008 to 2011 entered. And we're still working on the 2012 documents as well as documents as they come in. Um, as we, we enter the data, we make these records. This is uh, how we base our aggregates. And you can, um, you can see the, the date. The date is going to be the, um, given by the registrant on the form. And a registrant is just somebody who is representing uh, foreign interest. Uh, the amount is how much for that particular record who the client was, who the registrant is. Um, and sometimes they show a purpose. Uh, that would be shown that that description is going to be put there. And the subcontractor field is because sometimes um, agents, foreign agents will hire other foreign agents to re represent the same client. And if you're looking just at one client, you don't want to uh, double count that. So we try to keep track of that as best as we can. Um, the filing icon at the end always will take you to a profile of where that uh, information came from. Um, so we'll look at this a uh, bit more later. Um, those are just the, the headings. Um, so foreign agents um, that go back. Let's, yes, sorry. Going back to the previous page, um, which was uh, Russia. Um, you can see that the Russian Federation, which is what we were looking at before, um, you can see the foreign agents that represent the client. That means uh, within the last few records, these have been um, these registrants have listed the Russian Federation as their client. And you can see uh, foreign agents that represented the client in the past, 
So that relationship has ended, but you can still find out the information there. If Okay, so we're going to go back to the top and show um, some uh, how to get contacts or payments or disbursements for all of the records. And the, that um, is in at the very top of the page. And it's all of the records for Russia. So it, it essentially uh, these three um, tabs here will, will tally um, all of the foreign lobbying clients and et cetera that you see below. Yes. Um, so uh, for contacts, I'm going to click through, and um, it, should sh it will show all of the clients that identify as being Russian and the contacts that, that we have in our system. Um, contacts is a really broad category. It could be uh, media outreach, as you see right um, on the top. Uh, this is uh, Ketchum Inc., which uh, was made, you might have heard of them because they helped Putin place an op-ed. Um, but you can see they, they have done, they do lots of other work too. Um, so we try to describe what kind of outreach these different uh, firms do, uh, who they're doing it for, and who they're contacting. Um, and then if you look at the bottom of any of these table pages, uh, there's a download button. And that is going to give you all the records filtered. So if you're just interested in seeing all contacts from a particular country, the easiest way is to go to that country page, uh, go, then you know, go to contacts and download the contacts that, for that country. And you can see here, as Lindsay was showing, there are 29 uh, different results pages here. So when you hit download, um, it will download all of those records for you. Um, and then I think a really great thing for journalists um, is the, the ability to fact check any particular piece of information. Um, so if you go here and you see uh, Ketchum, and they did a press release on uh, for Gazprom. So I'm clicking on the, uh, the, the document icon. And then that will give you uh, a page. And this page is uh, at the, in the top we have the aggregated information that is the data behind the, the original fi filing. And uh, we give aggregates for that particular filing. And you can also download a, a detailed straight spreadsheet for that filing right here. Below that, you can see there's a document. And this is the um, representation of the document. And you can go through and uh, find you know, usually this information is buried in attachments, but you'll be able to find where we get um, these other things. And you can see this is the pr uh, press releases for Gazprom. Um, and if you want to download the original PDF for yourself, there's the download button on the bottom of the page. Now I just want to just note too that what you're seeing is the original source PDF. Um, Lindsay and her team has gone through the, the painful process of transcribing that information, even though that information obviously looked like it came from a computer at some point, that information um, is not provided in a machine-readable format. It's provided in these PDFs that are obviously rescanned back into, in, into um, uh, the computer. And uh, it's a really a great resource because now what you're getting here is um, all, all of the numbers in the um, in a CSV in a downloadable format, as well as being able to look back at the source records. Yeah, and I'm again just going to go ahead and show you payments. And uh, again, in the the top of the location, you get the payments for any uh, clients that uh, are from from Russia, and we give you all, all the ones that we have in our system. Uh, you can see uh, date is pretty straightforward. Um, if there isn't a date given, we will give the date of, that the form of the form with an asterisk. Uh, amount is also straight from the form. The client, uh, the, the registrant, that's the foreign agent. Uh, the purpose, if they give them, you can see this, this does not have any of that. And then the subcontractor, again, is to help you uh, identify when money is more moving around more in a circular fashion. Um, and then I'm going to go to disbursements, and you can click here uh, to see related disbursements. And uh, disbursements are money that is money 
given to, uh, sorry, money uh, that has been spent on behalf of a client. Um, so that really wide range thing. You can see fair filing fees, that shows up a lot. Um, lots of uh, different kinds of things that they, they buy in order to do business. Um, lots of, uh, you can see like FedEx and media things. Um, and again, all of these files at the bottom, you can get the download, uh, the full records for that. For that. Okay. And then um, another way to find what you're looking for is with search. And it's pretty uh, straightforward. So I'm, right now I'm going to uh, search for Podesta. Uh, if you're not familiar with Podesta, it's a big uh, lobbying group that is um, shown by, um, and you can see uh, we have Heather Podesta and Tony Podesta, and I'm looking for Podesta Inc. Let me see. Huh. Um, I'm, let's see. And the search that we have here is actually, uh, for some of you who are, are techies, um, is what we use is Elasticsearch for this. So some of the normal common operators that you're familiar with, you can totally use uh, within the search. So such as uh, quotes or minus signs, so very uh, common operators there. Um, so there are um, uh, different groups here, and, you, and now it looks like uh, we're looking at one of the many Podestas. Here's Heather. Um, so um, you can see uh, it's a very similar page to the pages that we saw before, um, but with foreign agents, they also can contribute um, to politicians. And the main advantage of tracking uh, the contributions uh, from FARA rather than FEC is that you don't have to worry about name matching. Um, so you can you can compare contributions and contacts and see that overlap. Um, and I think that's a really interesting thing to do. Um, and uh, I'll just uh, click on that real quick. And you can see that um, has the date, uh, the amount, uh, recipient who's who's getting or benefiting. Uh, we also show uh, in kind contributions. We'll just go in as amount as well. Um, registrant. Uh, the contributor, and uh, again, also always that link back to the filing. Um, okay, and then um, again, you can see the the client uh, for this. In this case, uh, it's the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative. Um, these links will take you to tables like you've seen before. And then at the bottom of a registrant page, you can see all the documents that we have and the date that they were received. Um, and processed means if we've gone through the, the um, taxing exercise of doing the data entry for them, so you can do your aggregates. Um, and then let's, and then you can see uh, these, these, uh, this list will go back to 2011. Um, our records go back to 2008. Um, and then let's see. Um, and so let's look at um, the uh, payments link again. Um, you can see that it's an it's an aggregate for 2013, and that's forms that were filled in during 2013. Um, and you can at any time you see this I, you can click on it, and it will explain uh, what. Where, how, what methodology we use to get that number. So uh, we, what we also wanted to show is that in, in FARA there are also political contribution records, uh, which is very, very interesting uh, because there are, you know, and for many of the folks here on the phone, especially folks here in Sunlight, we're all very interested in, 
in um, campaign contributions. And what's interesting here is that we're showing you information as it is coming from FARA, but it's really important to note that they do not necessarily match the FECs. And there's a reason for that. Um, because there are, as we all know, there are different reporting thresholds between the FEC um, and FARA. FARA actually, um, let me correct me if I'm wrong, but like it's you know, any political contribution. There is no um, minimum um, or maximum, minimum or maximum threshold for reporting purposes. State and local. Well, those are the different. So we have threshold is one of the main ones, differences. Another one is reporting timelines. Um, so if you're reporting on the FTC, uh, certain times different committees will uh, report under a monthly or a quarterly basis, et cetera. Um, and that's different, and the, the requirements are different under uh, FARA. And as um, uh, Kathy was just mentioning, the levels of government are different as well. Under FARA, all political contributions, regardless of what level of government, including state and, and local, must be reported. And on the, in the FEC is just federal. Um, and then um, the, the entity that's also reporting are different. So under FARA, it is actually the um, agents who are reporting this information. But under the FEC, it is the, oftentimes it is the recipients or the campaigns that are making that type of disclosure information. Um, so here Lindsay is showing you uh, the different information that we have for political uh, campaign contributions in FARA. Yeah, and I'm going to click on Jim, uh, Jim Moran. That's the best example. Let me see. Um, Oh, I'll, let's, uh, I looked up an example before, and we went with uh, Donna Edwards. Um, and um, Donna Edwards. Okay, um, and this is an example of a recipient profile for someone who is a member of Congress. Uh, there's a link to their full Influence Explorer profile if you want to know more. Uh, we list the committees that the member sits on. And uh, below that, we have all of the FARA records that we've uh, compiled. Uh, we have different types of records all broken out. You can see uh, Donna Edwards herself is the, fir is the first to show up. Um, also, uh, leadership packs are in here, or in the records. We will show the leadership pack. We show uh, in records where they identify that um, they met with someone who is a staff member of Donna Edwards. Um, in this in this case, we can see Adrian Christian um, was a staff member and um, was contacted. And so you can find those contacts that way if you're interested in looking at influence from that angle. Um, and we have the political contributions again, and these are fair contributions from registrants to Donna Edwards. And there's a question on, on the Internet from Margo. Uh, it's the contribution doc from the FEC, or, it is, or is it from FARA? And these are everything we're showing you is from FARA. And it's important to note that there are, because of the different uh, reporting requirements, um, et cetera, oftentimes the FARA reports are going to be very, very, very different than the FEC reports. Um, and also it looks like we have a question from Holly. She has her hand raised. Um, Holly, do you want to unmute yourself? Zora Seven. Can um, you hear me? Yes. Hi. Is that Holly? Sorry, I had typed it in. It's just a little unclear to me. You're showing contributions. You were showing contributions from people who work at Heather Podesta, not the individual, right? But people who work at the firm. You weren't really clear about that. Uh, correct. We we give you uh, we give as much information as we get, but we're limited we're limited by the information. Um, that is reported to the Department of Justice. And uh, if you look here, this is uh, for Donna Edwards. Uh, the contributor is, uh, sometimes it will be, you know, it might say Heather Podesta, or it might say a particular lobbyist contributed, or it might say that the PAC contributed. If we have that information, we enter it, and that will show up as the contributor. Um, otherwise, the, it just shows the registrant. So you know either the, the Podesta group PAC or an uh, um, individual at, um, and that was, sorry, that was Heather Podesta's uh, gr group that we were looking at before. But you can see on the, in this case the, the Podesta group um, would, was the registrant and they did not say who the contributor was. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Okay, and then another way to browse the data is through the foreign agents at the top. And we look at the foreign agent feed. 
And this is the best way to find uh, what's new and what's most recently added. Um, and as we go through and we hand enter them, uh, the, there will be a green check mark that will say process next to them. Uh, these are all new. We haven't gotten to them. But this is your opportunity to, to see something that other people haven't seen yet. Um, so let's just uh, click on one of them. Um, let's see if anyone looks interested. Interesting. Um, yeah, Patent Box has an amendment. Yeah, the amendments aren't are uh, shorter. Oh. Um, so we um, we can see like uh, for the summary. Uh, this hasn't been completed yet, so we just show a list of clients that we have in the system, and terminated clients have an asterisk after them. And uh, you, again, always get that original document at the end and a download for that original document. Okay. Okay. So another way to uh, look through and browse the data is to go through the Foreign Agents um, tab, actually. So if you go through here, you will see um, uh, a number of different information that we are now providing for you. You will see tallies for the money received by the foreign agents in 2013 by each of those clients. And all of these fields are sortable. And that's a really important um, element to have because then you can see, you can sort it based on the most uh, amount of money in terms of payments made. Um, yeah, and that's uh, really helpful. But I think one of the most interesting things is to see who's actually doing federal lobbying. And uh, we get to define federal lobbying as people who are contacting members of Congress or the White House or um, congressional staff in some way. So this, this will pick up things that you don't see in LDA. Um, there's no 20% rule. If they said that they met with a member of com Congress, then uh, we're, we're tracking them like they're lobbyists. Um, and then you can also see uh, State Department contacts. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, lots of, a few firms specialize in uh, contacting the State Department. There's lots of PR firms in here, so media contacts can help you figure out uh, you know, who is a P PR firm. For, for instance, the, uh, de the Department of Tourism for Bermuda, um, they have, they're mostly media contacts. They want people to visit Bermuda. They don't have political donations or anything like that. And then the last one you can sort by is also the political donations. And this is essentially what we are showing earlier um, as well, uh, where you can see whether um, employees of these different foreign agents uh, have made any uh, contributions to um, individuals. And then on the bottom of the page too, it was also incredibly useful is what we were trying to stress earlier, um, is that you can download the whole file and actually um, and so that's really important because we want to show you where you can download this information. You can go to data. Um, if you go to data and then uh, there's a bulk download section, um, you can get all of the, the bulk downloads for the things that we've been showing. Um, you scroll down a bit to where it says foreign influence. Um, and here we have our different data types. And we give you all the information we have in the, the system and we update these uh, downloads nightly. Um, so, con so you can uh, have contact records, and you can have payment records, that's payments from clients to registrants, disbursement records, uh, that's pay payments from uh, re registrants to the outside world on behalf of a client, um, contributions, those are registrants con or you know, their staff or their PAC, and they contribute to members of um, Congress and local officials too. And then you have a full um, client and registrant list, which uh, shows what um, clients uh, currently are being represented or have been represented by what registrants. And we'll just show you real quick um, that if you click on each of them, it downloads as a uh, CSV. You note that on the bottom left-hand corner, we're, we're actually downloading the list of um, contacts that's available in Sierra right now. Um, and when you open uh, the document, we're showing you this in real time. <laughs> so uh, we're going to let CS, the CSV open in Excel. And then there are a number of different columns that are interesting and important. Um, yeah, this gives, you a little, this gives you more data than you can find on the website. So if you, if you want more information, uh, the, I, the downloads are a great place to go. Um, you can see the date here. Um, and that's the date that the contact uh, 
took place. If there was no um, date for that particular contact, we used the date from the form. And you can tell that. Um, and then uh, this is the, the next thing you see is contact title. And that's uh, who's being contacted, like what their, their title is. Some of the titles are rather wordy, um, but they're there. Uh, also be cognizant that titles can change. Um, the contact name, um, that's the name of the person that was contacted. Um, contact office, uh, where, where, do they, where do they work for? And the agency um, is very useful as well. Um, we try to, we, you can find House, Senate, uh, for staff and then for congressional staff, and then Congress is reserved for members of Congress. Um, you, you can also find uh, media contacts in there because there's a lot of press releases. Uh, you can sort the agency being media. Um, you can see what client uh, those contacts were on behalf of, um, what the location of that client is, uh, the registrant, so who's representing the client. The, uh, and a description, and this is depending on the description that they give us in the form. Um, sometimes it's vague, but you can tell things from, from timing. Uh, then you have the, the type of description, where you can have email, meeting, phone, um, unknown or other. And that's, again, all given in the, in the forms. Uh, employees mentioned would be if there is a lobbyist at the meeting or an employee of the registrant at the meeting. Uh, they'll show up as a list here. Uh, we also add affiliated member bio guide IDs. So it's the bio guide ID of the member being contacted. If it's a member's office or someone who works for that member, their bio guide ID will be um, added there. And if you wanted to crosswalk this data, this is a great point to do that at. And if you have any particular questions about you know, a particular line item, I always uh, recommend going to the source form, uh, which is listed under source, and that's where we got that information from. And so you can double check anything you like. Um, it's a, again, it's a huge project, so um, it, it takes a while sometimes to find exactly what you're looking for. Um, yeah, sorry. and this is Kathy. Um, I would also just say uh, one of the great things Lindsay has done here is enable people to check our data against the source material, and we really encourage you to do that. Uh, as you may have gotten some notion of, this is an enormous project for us. It involves a lot of data entry that we think is unnecessary if, uh, mm -hmm. if the government would require electronic filing, but for now they don't. So we are hand entering this data from forms and mistakes are inevitable. If you see a mistake, please email us and let us know so that we can get it corrected. Yeah. Thanks. And there's a feedback tab is actually on the um, home page or on every single page of, or, of uh, Influence Explorer. So feel free to contact us via that method um, on your right hand side. It's really easy to use. Um, but also just going back to what Lindsay was just showing you in terms of the spreadsheet, you can also look at, up all of the different heading descriptions if you need more information. And you can find that under um, data.influenceexplorer.com slash docs uh, slash foreign influence um, and, and in the documentation section. Um. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pulling that up right now. And um, it gives a complete list of all of the titles on um, the spreadsheets and what the definitions are. Um, again, if you ever need to reach out for us about any of these things, we're happy to help you with that. Um, but we do have the documentation laid out here. Um, and there's a question from Margot online. She asked if uh, we've made the PDF searchable. Yeah, we um, for, for the most part, uh, lots of them have been OCR'd, and um, we load them into our search engine as we get them, and we uh, backfilled, and we we so you should be able to do a text search um, using the search bar. Um, so the search bar, if you were if you were looking for, um, I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong site. That's another good thing to note. Uh, Influence Explorer um, is, is different from Foreign Influence Explorer, and the, the search for Foreign Influence Explorer will give you the Influence Explorer site, where if you're interested in foreign records, 
bar on Foreign Influence Explorer will do that. Um, is that how you spell it? Yeah. Okay. So you can see that there's different kinds of records, and one of those records is documents. And so it found that word in these documents. So you can go to any of these documents, and you know, um, if uh, this we haven't processed this, processed this form uh, where it has the detailed information, but we do have um, the information here in the the PDF, which you can download. And if you hit Control F, you can also search through the, the PDF itself. Um, and Lindsay's going to show you that right now. Yeah. You see how? So, yes. Uh, right here. Um, it's a little hard to see what it's highlighted, but it, yeah. So it was mentioned in the, the document. So even if we haven't done the data entry on that particular document yet, all of the information should be searchable. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to go back now to Foreign Influence Explorer, and then the last thing we want to show you that you can explore the data is via the various uh, feeds uh, and the different information. Um, so Lindsay just uh, promoted that um, preview that earlier by looking at the Foreign Agent feed. Um, Again, yeah, th these are uh, the. This is what we see as we get in. We scrape this twice a day from the Department of Justice. Um, so if you're ever interested in browsing what's new, this is definitely the, the best place to, to look. Um, using the Department of Justice search can get a little clunky, and I feel like this is a, a, a bit more user friendly. Um, and the, our other feed is our proposed arms feed, which shows records from the Defense Security Cooperation Agency. And they are required to, to um, do a press release when there's a possible sale to a foreign, milita uh, foreign entity. And so you can see um, right here, uh, Korea, I'm clicking on. And you have um, the, the location that will take you back to the location page um, that we saw before. And um, these are all just notices of things that could happen. Uh, I think that's really important because you can, like, you can see things before they're already done with because um, there's nothing you can do once they're done. Um, this is, uh, and it will ex explain how much the cost was, um, what kind of equipment they're interested in. And you can uh, follow up on these sales with the Federal Register. Um, and note this is, this is public information. All of this information exists out there, but it's really difficult. Like, I, you know, I didn't know that there was a, a mandatory press release uh, to be made public whenever there was a proposed sale. So uh, what Lindsay has done is really aggregated all of this data into one site. And uh, all of these feeds are also searchable. So you can go in and type in helicopter um, into the, the search bar. And then what you see here are um, all the various proposed arms sales of helicopters. Um, and then you can click through to each of them and see the original uh, press release. And you can also download the original uh, press release uh, with the button in the right, lower right hand corner. Right. So that's pretty much um, Foreign Influence Explorer. I, I think there's, there's a lot of information here, but the best way is to use it or to, to learn more about the tools, really just to go ahead and start clicking on things and, and start uh, looking through the data and the information. Um, so are there any questions, um, any feedback? Feel free to unmute your phone. Uh, you can do that by uh, hitting star six. Star six is to unmute. Is it star seven? Uh, star. Or seven to unmute. Um, uh, so feel free to unmute your phone, and you can return. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. And also uh, submit any questions onto the left-hand uh, side. So you can unmute your phone by uh, hitting star seven. And if there's any questions, Lindsay is uh, incredibly fast uh, on email, <laughs> so you can shoot her an email. If you have any questions about the tool or sort of just need any ideas or suggestions on how to uh, use it for a story, 
Um, and you can also reach me at a 9 at sunlightfoundation.com. And please send us links to any stories. Yeah, and if you do write any stories, please do send us those links. Uh, it is, I, I can't uh, talk about, mention how much uh, work Lindsay has put into this tool, because unlike some of our other tools, Foreign Influence Explorer really, really depends on um, the manpower <laughs> of, of the people here to um, enter in the uh, large amounts of data and information uh, from, from, the, uh, fair, the, from the FAIR forms. Um, so if you, ever, if you see any mistakes, feel free to email us and let us know. Um, do you have anything to And uh, Kathy, again, if you would like to help us, uh, what we did done with this database, uh, some of you may know uh, uh, ProPublica and the Sunlight Foundation uh, collaborated uh, to start building this database a couple of years ago. Uh, we got it built. We, just, we learned from some mistakes there. Uh, really uh, inspired by Lindsay, who uh, used the FARA database quite a bit as a reporter and then uh, learned enough programming to fix it. Uh, we have updated the database. Uh, as we said, we're, uh, we've really got data running from 2008 to 2000, uh, through 2013, but we are really trying to fill the hole in the donut. Uh, we have some, uh, some of those years in between where we're trying to backfill. If anyone would like to help us, uh, we are always happy to get volunteers, and if you want to come over on some Friday, we'll organize a party and we'll <laughs> supply the, uh, the munchies and the drinks. So uh, uh, we're working as hard as we can to complete this project, uh, but we would always love to have some help. So uh, feel free to email us if you want to do that. Yeah, and I just pulled out um, our, our blog post um, that we have written uh, recently about the stories that we've been able to to explore using the tool for an Influence Explorer. So feel free to check those out as well. Um, they're tagged under Foreign Influence Explorer, and there's a lot of really in interesting nuggets of uh, information um, that adds to uh, the, the reporting abilities of, of our staff here. Any closing thoughts, Liz? Um, no, thank you so much for your um, time today. If you have any uh, questions or feedback or suggestions, I would love to hear them. Um, again, my email address is lyoung at sunlightfoundation.com. All right, and we'll be record we have recorded this uh, webinar, so we'll put it up online for folks who have missed it or if you know uh, colleagues that you would like to share this with, um, and I'll, I'll e email that out um, in the next day or so. So thank you once again for joining us um, for the webinar on Sarah. Um, on uh, the Foreign Influence Explorer, and we look forward to your feedback and thoughts. Um, thank you so much, and have a great day.